Good morning. I had posted on the Facebook group Junk Journal Junkies a shot of just the cover of this book. And I have finished this journal. It is for a friend of mine who lost her husband recently. And she and I got together for lunch. And um, one of the things that she said to me was that she didn't know who she was anymore. And, and I thought that was kind of sad. And I actually lost my husband a few years ago as well, but I never had that particular issue of not knowing who I was. So I decided to make this journal for her. It's very basic, it's very pretty, and I included lots of quotes about loss of a loved one and grieving and so on, just in the hope that that might help her with her journey. So to open up inside, I left the inside front cover blank and did not put a, um, a pocket of any kind because it was just too pretty. I couldn't bear to cover it up. On the opposite page, I did a little bit of stamping at the bottom. I believe that's a Stampin' Up! stamp set, and if I find out which one it is, I'll link it down at the bottom. And then on each page, I just did a little bit of a Martha Stewart corner punch just to add a little interest. My pages are all coffee dyed. If I did a stamp on one side, I did a stamp on the other side, just to sort of help out with that ghosting problem that you sometimes get. So lots of room for writing. Here is a little tuck spot that I made from a type of a label, and I'm pretty sure this is a ephemeris vintage garden. And this is a quote that I found on Pinterest that I just thought would be nice. And what I tried to do on the back of most of those cards was add a little file card for journaling space. My friend is not a junk journaler. She doesn't know anything about junk journals, so this will all be very new to her. Here's a doily that I sprayed with um, Tattered Angels and another little um, butterfly stamp also, I believe, from Stampin' Up! and another quote. And then on the other side, another tuck spot, and she can put something in there that she likes. Another stamp from that set. It was just a set of four stamps that had little um, kind of sprays of flowers or some type thing. And then over here I have one of those nice book page tuck spots made out of the banners. And this is a sizzlets die and a little bit of trim on the um, side sticking out. And then another quote. I like this one especially. I'll be okay, just not today. And um, I got the quotes from Pinterest. I think I mentioned that. And if I had some software like Photoshop or something, I might have redone them so that the colors went along with the scheme of the journal. But I didn't think my friend would think about that or worry about that, so I didn't bother. And I don't have the software anyway. This was also from a package of paper. It's the same one that I mentioned in my post on Junk Journal Junkies, but I'll try to link that below as well. And just some more paper to write on. And a different one of those set of four stamps there. And this is one of those little file folders, but I turned it into a pocket with another quote inside. And also some writing space on the back. I distressed around the edges a little bit with my Tim Holtz vintage photo distress ink. Just another stamp. And here's another little fold out of that um, scrapbook paper. And I've got an altered paper clip on the top and another quote. And I took all the quotes and tried to mount them on some kind of paper just to make them a little bit more interesting looking and a little neater looking. And this quote I mounted on craft paper, but then I glued it right on. And I thought that one was nice too, but somehow I came very close to cutting off the edges on that one. Just barely made it in there. On this one I used a very simple EK Success edge punch just to make a little border at the top. This is one of those book page pockets, which I also mentioned, I think, in a previous video. I did a stamped image of a dragonfly, one of my favorites. Love dragonflies and butterflies. And I just used that sort of as a cover-up. And then I found some Velcro that came with something. I think it was one of those little strips of Velcro that's supposed to be used to hold your cords together. And it's nice because it's not too strong. So when you lift it up, you can hear 
a little pop, but it's not going to tear your pages apart. Inside the pocket, I put a picture of my friend with her husband, but for their privacy, I covered that up. And another quote that I really liked. And I'm hoping that she finds some comfort in this. I am going to include a letter with this. I was going to give it to her when I saw her, but I didn't for two reasons. One, I thought we'd both end up crying, and we had already done enough of that. And um, two, it wasn't quite done yet, and I didn't want to rush it. And here's another little set of stamps. This one's butterflies. And then on this page, another banner tuck spot. This time I put a little lace trim. I was on vacation, as I said, so I don't have a lot of things with me there. I leave some things that I can craft with, but I'm trying not to get crazy and recreate everything that I have at home at this place because, number one, it will cost me a fortune, and number two, it's just kind of silly. So then this is another quote that I really liked a lot about grief. Pinterest is kind of amazing. You just get on there and... You put in a search for something. In this case, I searched quotes about grieving, quotes about loss of a loved one, and a million things popped up. And just another little altered paper clip. And then the last page, and this is where I'll probably put the letter that I'll include when I mail this to her. And I'll have to explain to her how this all works because, like I said, junk journaling is new to her. This is from that same paper collection on the back. Um, on the inside, I used a little um, little bit of, uh -huh, what am I trying to say, paint, some kind of paint, just to make that a little bit pink. And then on the outside, I used some green paint, acrylic paint, that's what I was trying to say. And I made a dangle with some kind of a mixed bag of beads that I had ordered a couple of years ago, just so I would have a few things there. Um, I do bind my journals, almost always using the pamphlet stitch. And I've seen all kinds of different things that people use to do that, including baker's twine. This is actually something that I picked up at Joann's before I knew about any of the other methods that people use. And it's upholstery, um, upholstery string, upholstery thread. It's heavy. It's Well, it's not heavy, but it's very strong, obviously, if they're using it for upholstery. It seems to go through quite well. It has kind of a silky feel to it. I don't know, necessarily know that it's waxed. But it works well for me, and that's what I've been using. So thank you very much for watching. If you have any comments, please feel free to leave them. Any constructive criticism, I'm open. All right, so thank you very much for taking the time to watch, and have a great day.